speaking to the Stanford University Graduate School of Business Global Management Program back in the year 2002, Lorenzo Zambrano, CEO and Chairman of the Global Cement Group, CEMEX, said, for me, globalization has two dimensions. First, the impact on my company of increasingly globalized markets for capital, for technology, for people, for information, and for products. Second, the impact on the countries in which we operate, and hence on my company, of increasingly globalized political, economic, regulatory, and social forces. In a sense, one is micro and one is macro. He also said this, we have to cope with markets that are every day deeper, broader, and more connected. Strategies that were highly successful in local markets, isolated markets, can almost overnight be bankrupted by unexpected new linkages to other markets. Projects or acquisitions that seemed impossibly large may suddenly become financeable as bankers discover new ways to manage risk. And information that we thought was privileged suddenly becomes available to all our competitors with the click of a mouse. Mr. Zambrano was already telling us then that organizations competing in the new economy environment must be capable of understanding the impact of both the micro and the macro global economy. To do so, we must possess the critical thinking and analytical skills necessary to acquire and evaluate such data in order to understand trends and issues in our markets and how they are or will influence our organization. For example, manufacturers today can no longer rely on low prices, high quality, and on-time delivery alone to keep them on top. These attributes, advantages a decade ago, are now just the basic requirements to stay in the game. And the rules of the game are constantly evolving. Competition comes from all over the globe, and we are serving customers whose demands often reflect experiences, knowledge, and expectations with which we have little or no personal exposure. While demand is micro, macro input to our processes are necessary to serve in a meaningful way our customers in their micro environment. Therefore, keeping up with the competition means meeting three key challenges of this new environment. One, maintaining customer loyalty while attracting new customers. Two, keeping products up to date while shortening their life cycles. And three, improving quality within your organization, including your suppliers, while lowering costs and prices. Accomplishing these things in a global context shouts loudly that business as usual will not work. To gain the upper hand, organizations today must pursue a myriad of strategies, like integrating technologies, adopting e-business methods, and setting stringent customer satisfaction, product quality, and cost efficiency targets. High quality products and services delivered efficiently, effectively, and transparently are essential to meet the economic, logistical, and competitive challenge of this globalized marketplace. To manage a supply chain that spans the globe while operating with little or no margin for error 
An organization needs intelligent tactics and plans to get the job done right the first time. This means the knowledge not just to do things right, but to do the right things. No organization can corner the market on good ideas. To compete, we all must expand our learning from the experiences of others. To learn from others how to help produce improvements in processes and profits. To discover the root causes of the operating differences between ourselves and our competitors. Adopting and adapting the exemplary practices used by others to accelerate our own progress. This is what has drawn many of the top global benchmarking organizations to implement mindshare strategies from Semex to Ford Motor, from Johnson & Johnson to IBM, and from GE to Siemens. World-class enterprises are leveraging their intelligence gathering expertise to achieve rapid deployment, world-class quality, and reduce costs by integrating new input from mindshare programs with traditional benchmarking and new technologies of data gathering. Benchmarking is an ongoing systemic process for measuring and comparing an organization's work processes to others that exhibit functional best practices. The goal is to provide an external standard for measuring the quality and cost of internal processes and to identify opportunities for improvement. It is a learning process that helps organizations improve the products and services they offer to their customers. Global benchmarking is the identification of the best local practices of global organizations. Global benchmarking requires several elements to be successful. A well-designed performance measurement and benchmarking process, senior management support, training, useful information technology systems, and resources, especially time and funding. A sound benchmarking program is based on an iterative process that covers a minimum of four phases. First, establishing the study plan. Two, conducting the study. Three, diagnosing the data. And four, internalizing the results and taking action. It is iterative because although benchmarking is a process that builds step by step, it is nonetheless a flexible process. After each step, a previous step can be revisited and the basic direction of a study altered as necessary. As world businesses, markets, and business processes have changed, benchmarking has uncovered new challenges and fruitful solutions by uncovering insights to the change strategies of successful organizations, including your competitors. By understanding the world's best practices, successful organizations have improved their effectiveness and profits by achieving breakthroughs and innovations in their pursuit of world-class performance. For example, in 2005, more than 40 supply chain executives from 26 of the world's top retail and consumer products companies attended a supply chain benchmarking and best practices session in Orlando, Florida. The participants had combined annual sales of $450 billion, making the three-day workshop one of the largest international benchmarking and best practices events ever. They shared information on key supply chain issues, such as supplier collaboration, 
transportation, sourcing, distribution center performance, international operations, and technology investments. The workshop allowed them to compare their operations and processes to the benefit of all. I hope by now most of you understand and have participated in some sort of benchmarking activity and therefore understand the value of benchmarking as an important data source for any organization. So what I want to do now is look at Mindshare and how it complements benchmarking to provide the organization with insight as to the expectations of customers and how they see your competitors. First, consider this. When people think of specific offerings of a product or service, they think of a limited list. This is sometimes called the evoked set. And each product included in an evoked set has the power of mind share. For example, if you are considering a college education, you have many thousands of colleges to choose from. However, one's evoked set, that is, those schools that are actually considered, will probably be limited to more, no more than 10. Of these 10, the one that you are most familiar with will have the greatest proportion of your mind share. Said another way, the more easily one remembers a brand, and most importantly, its value to you, the closer it is to the top of your mind. Second, while Mindshare is commonly the purview of the advertising world, it is also a unique and valuable form of research. It is unique because it combines qualitative and quantitative approaches with the cutting edge theories of consumer behavior. It is valuable beyond marketing applications because it can be used to better understand your current and potential customers and their requirements. Mindshare is used in a variety of ways. It is not only used to learn what your customer thinks about you and your competition, but also to assist in the design and positioning of products and services improving communications to and from customers, and the development of customer-specific merchandising and product delivery strategies. Mindshare precedes market share because customers need to know that your product exists and what it can provide them before they will buy it. Whether in the form of product designs, packaging or advertisements, most consumers' responses are visual, but most marketing surveys usually ask people to respond to text-based questions that don't relate to their actual experiences with products. The hallmark of Mindshare is the emphasis on face-to-face -face surveying, visually engaging web-based surveys, customer roundtables to acquire vivid customer representations of products, applications, product delivery styles and costs, and customer behavior tracking. A marketing-related term worth noting here is brand equity. Brand equity is the value built up in a brand measured by how much a customer is aware of that brand. An investment in brand equity is commonly claimed to work through the creation of brand knowledge, which consists of two aspects, brand image and brand awareness. Brand awareness is composed of the strength of a brand in a consumer's mind. For example, their ability to recall the brand. The combination of the two is sometimes referred to as the customer franchise. While organizations commonly seek to influence brand equity, it is the consumer who determines brand equity 
and its value. Positive brand equity, equity can be influenced by effective promotion and advertising, but it is really only created by consistently meeting or exceeding the customer's requirements. Negative brand equity is almost always the result of failing to meet the customer's requirements. This is important to keep in mind because positive brand equity can be a significant barrier to your competitors. Consider this, the greater an organization's brand equity, the easier to establish family branding. This allows leveraging off the equity accumulated in the core brand, and this makes new product introduction less risky and less expensive. This, by the way, is the product expansion strategy Semex has pursued throughout the world, both with their core offerings as well as the capabilities of the organizations they have acquired. Last year, Semex sold 81 million metric tons of cement, 160 million metric tons of aggregates, and 70 million cubic meters of ready mix, as well as significant volumes of other products for many thousands of customers in more than 50 countries. They reach those customers through a robust mix of traditional distribution channels, their own and their wholesalers, multi-product storefronts, mobile telephones, the internet, and other innovative platforms. And they provided their customers with a broad array of services designed to help them complete their construction projects on time and on budget. The data from a Mindshare program supports the process of meeting customer requirements by unlocking forward-looking insight and allowing the organization to anticipate changes and new developments in their customers' thinking. Combined with insights from competitive benchmarking, such analysis reveals consumer behavior from which the organization can develop an evergreen model for anticipating future technology shifts, consumer requirements, and the probable effects of new technologies. Said another way, Mindshare initiatives provide the framework to determine the right evaluation metrics and best practices from across traditional consumers, which gives management a strategic direction for success. Mindshare can also help define revenue opportunities, identify the paths of re least resistance for revenue streams, and the development of new business models and their implications for traditional channels of business. An effective Mindshare program provides input on how people perceive your product or service, what they think about the organization providing the service, and its commitment to the marketplace compared to other providers. In summary, by utilizing the same types of quantitative studies that are used for branding research, Mindshare is a good tool for forecasting future market share and trends, increasing the accuracy of marketing, sales, and production planning, developing an effective competitive positioning strategy in concert with benchmarking. We are currently. And one way we do this is through our purchases. This is why a brand decision answers the question, who am I? Because it is impossible to develop a brand position in a vacuum an organization must know and fully understand the who am I of its customers and its competition. In other words, in the mind of the consumer, what needs are being fulfilled by your brand or the competition's brand? One unpleasant fact of the new global economy is that today's consumer has become cynical because too few experiences 
live up to their expectations. Because customers today have more choices, better information about available products and services, and better access to suppliers, there's been a fundamental shift in their expectations of value. So disappoint them once, and they won't forget. The result is that real power in economic transactions has shifted to the customer. For this reason, successful organizations act not by what they want to do, by, but by what their customer wants. They have learned to shift more and more from supply side to demand side thinking. We and our organizations must also learn to sense and respond to our customers' desires. Rather than simply making and selling services, we think are valuable. Total quality management is a management process to assure that the customer's requirements are met. A process commitment based on facts to achieve customer satisfaction. It is a process of achieving organizational objectives that guarantee the customer's requirements. Recognizing that customer satisfaction is the customer's perception that a supplier has completely satisfied their expectations. New economy organizations are continually stressing the benefits, not the features of their products and services, and striving to exceed their customers' ex expectations. They don't focus on the price, but on the total value of their products and services to their customers. It goes without saying, that the economic, social, and trade shifts of the new economy have also impacted the concepts of total quality. This is why successful organizations have expanded their intelligence gathering to utilize the input of Mindshare. I invite you all to use this new resource. Our globalized society is increasingly a society of mind and images first, words and actions second. It used to be the, other, the opposite. In the new economy, if we first capture the mind of our potential customers, we can be sure that they will become more loyal and longer term consumers than if we win them over with price or other incentives easily attacked or manipulated by our competitors. Mindshare is now a prerequisite for market share. Capturing the mind of our customers is the best way to make our market share grow. In another module, I will address the hows of doing this. Thank you.